This is the pathway that leads to the treehouse. Me and my mom came here last winter and we spent about two months building the house. It's about 230 square feet. A 15 by 15 uh, is the actual structure. So we went with a ladder stair to access it. It's a little steep, it's not quite a ladder, not quite a stair. And it leads to this trap door. When I say I have a tree house in Hawaii, I don't know if people envision this. It was really hard to build, but it was more of a money thing to begin with. I know I knew I wanted a tree for it and I knew I wanted it like thatching and bamboo. There are some really cool bamboo structures that are like assembly ones and I love them, but they're way out of my budget. And the whole outside, I trimmed it with these bamboo halves and then this is like a bamboo matting that is over top of plywood. This thatching fence here is just a fence that's like a reed fence. And then this one, why it's only on the front is because it's really expensive. This is a bamboo one and a lot more sturdy. And then I have the thatching as well hanging down. I spent about 11 grand on this place and I couldn't buy anything for that much. Had to cut all these windows with um, a, a pexiglass saw. Interesting. I wanted to build a treehouse because I knew I was going to be in the jungle and I just think it fits. I really like that it's so like a unique space. And that's what attracted me to tiny homes in the first place. So I built a, my first tiny house like four years ago. Before the tiny house in Idaho, I had done extensive remodeling additions and knocking out walls and things like that, but I hadn't built a structure from scratch. So it was a little bit different, but not hard. I did it in about a month. And it was originally just a social experiment in simplicity or minimalism. All right, this is a tour of my tiny house. You walk right into my closet. And I thought I'd do it for a year and then move back into a normal size house. And then this is my door to my bathroom. I was probably there a couple of weeks before I just knew that I loved it and that I wouldn't ever change that. My shower. I really don't go all the way to the wall because of the plumbing. After I lived in my tiny house in Idaho for a couple years and it was so affordable that I started to think, well, maybe I could do this someplace else. I started looking for land in Hawaii. I started looking around Craigslist and I found a lot that was really reasonable. That would be a car that was left on the side of my road and overgrown that were moving. The land cost me $8,000. And so I bought it sight unseen and then came a year later. My bags were just filled with drills and saws and things like that. We're doing it on stilts and with a pure block foundation. This is the 16 by 16 foot footprint. That's how big the house will be. We put up all these big beams yesterday around the top, the headers. It's just me and my mom, so they're pretty heavy. <laughs> and so I want to show you how we're doing it. We bought two of these uh, strap winches at Home Depot. I think they were 27 bucks a piece and uh, tied it around our board. We're taking two of these, since it's lighter, and uh, screwing them together to make a four by. I have a little bit of construction experience. My 
mom always remodeled our homes growing up. So I started off really young, like spackling holes and hanging mini blinds. And then, you know, once I was like nine-ish, I could paint and uh, went from there. So we have finally built our stilts and we're starting to lay our floor, which is two by six by 16 tongue and groove. They just slide together. Uh, one end has a groove. The other one ha is, has a beveled edge out and they slide together and then we drill them into each of these beams. It was really hard to build, but me and my mom always say that like everything is figure outable. We have added a piece of the tongue and groove on our beams so that it's raised up the same level. And then it overhangs probably three and a half, four inches and that's to accommodate our facial board, which will be holding, it not only ties all of our ridge beams together, but it will also hold our gutter, which we'll need for the rainwater catchment. It took two months of actually building every single day from dawn till dusk, but we're able to get it done. So it's starting to rain. I only have gutter on two sides of the roof where it comes down. After I had bought the property, when I'm eating, I would sketch out different plants and have different ideas. A lot of napkin sketching was my designs. <laughs> so you basically come in the bedroom and uh, I built the bed really high up because I wanted everything to be like elevated in here. It also gives you a better view of outside. I built the frame out of two by fours and plywood and used bamboo for the legs. And then this bamboo here is from like bamboo blinds. So each one of those is just like glued on by hand. The headboard is made, I'm not sure if you can see up there, but the tube that my Jalousi hardware came in, it's, so it's just like a cardboard packing tube behind there. And this is a mat that is really commonly sold here. So I just glued it all and I cut the tube in half and I just made it the size of the roll. So this wall is like dividing the bathroom from the rest of this space, the bedroom. And behind it, um, this is actually like the sheetrock on that wall. So where it's framed, that's making the little closet. It's not really wide, it's like six inches, I think. And then I lined it all with uh, bamboo and it's from a bamboo blind. So I had to cut them all and glue it forever. <laughs> so this is where a kitchen would be if I ever decide to put one in. So this will eventually be a sink and then maybe I'll get a little fridge or stove top. I built this countertop with some two by 12s. This is where my solar. Here I have two six volt batteries. So giving me a 12 volt system. This is my controller. It says it's charging and that my batteries are all the way charged. Even though it's rainy outside, it still gets plenty of sun out here. And then I just have a, a three breaker box. Um, that last breaker is for the pump. And then I have my inverter there. These light fixtures I also made. And um, in between the rope is the wire. These windows weren't here originally. I didn't frame for them. I just had extra pexi glass and I made like these portholes and I really wanted the brass portholes. So what I did, this frame here, how it's all perfect, it's actually a black planter box uh, that you get at the hardware store. They're not decorative at all. They're just to pop plants in. And if you see like this is if you tried to sheetrock mud it, which is really rough. And this, you can kind of see black, the original. So I spray painted it and they just pop in there really well. This is a door that separates the bathroom and it slides like a, a barn door. It was uh, too short since the whole space was custom. So I took, um, some one buys and I framed a little spot and just went and cut down some branches and 
screwed them up there. And also for my handle, I just found a little branch. And then the hardware that I ended up using is for like a, a sliding closet doors. And then it has coasters on the bottom that help it glide. So this is the bathroom. Since it's off-grid, try to save water, I had this made and it's a concrete sink meant to resemble a rock and it weighs probably 100 pounds. It's really heavy. And so I took off the tank of my toilet and I built this uh, counter to go on top with this. And so what happens is when you flush the toilet, the water will actually come out of the faucet that I made out of bamboo and go into the sink so you can wash your hands and then it fills up the tank from there so you're not wasting any water. So the handle is right here where it always would be and when you flush it, the water comes out up here and you can wash your hands. And it actually runs for such a long time that it's more than enough that you would need. So the tube that's running up through here is actually where the water is coming out of. And then I have the drain here going into the drain that's in your toilet. So it just, once that fills to the right level, this will turn off automatically. There's no turning on and off the sink without flushing the toilet. So now the tank is full. So this is the shower space. And as you can see, there's no separation of the floor into the shower. These are tongue and groove two by sixes. They interlock together, but here I have taken a saw and gone down through each of them. And so this is all treated to be waterproof. This shower wall is like my pride and joy. I think it looks like a big trunk of a tree coming up in the tree house. So what it is, is tundra cork bark. They're tiles, essentially. That's like where one ends, so they're pretty big. And um, I just cut it with a sheetrock knife. I glued them to concrete board. And then I have these air plants that are actually real plants sprouting out all over to the top of the shower. So this shower head that I ordered, I wanted it to be like really big for the space. So it's 12 inches by 12 inches. And when I hung it up, it just looked too modern being all chrome. So I built this frame around it to make it have more substance because it's really thin. And then I put a piece of bamboo up the pipe that comes down. And then the other two walls, this kind of makes it like an indoor outdoor shower, which is awesome for Hawaii. So this is all slatted glass, which is called Jalousi. And I basically bought the frames, which is just this strip on the side. And then you, I had the glass cut to size and then put them all in. So you can open it up to the outside and kind of have a out, indoor outdoor shower. And the water just goes through there and I have a pan mounted to the bottom of the house that it drains out of. I love interior design and architecture. I think big homes can be beautiful and small spaces can be too. So for me, a small space is beautiful because it fits with my lifestyle. These shelves up there are a little bit wider and that's for things that I don't use very often uh, are up in those baskets. I think having a lot of stuff mentally weighs you down even in ways that you don't realize. Even though my house is small, I still like to have like an empty drawer. I still like to have like space there. I not have like every single spot perform a function. And then I have a little seating area. And then I mirrored this wall um, to make it more symmetrical with the other side is a doorway. So I didn't want a solid surface. I wanted it to look like you could go either way. So the house itself is 15 feet by 15 feet. 
so um, it's not huge, but it feels like plenty to me. I've been living in a small space, and even when I'm on the road for work, I'm in a hotel room, and so it's plenty of plenty of space to live. My original house was 97 square feet, so that was really tiny, and so this feels huge. So this is a non-permitted build, which is pretty common in Hawaii. There's lots of people with little shanties in the jungles just tucked in there because it's such an easy environment to survive in, I think. Yeah. Here, when you would talk to a contractor and ask a question or at um, the hardware store, the first question they ask is it permitted or unpermitted? And so. I'm like, oh, we can talk about this. Okay, cool. Let's move up. So this is an unpermitted build, but it's also like under the size requirement. So it's not really considered a house. But the downside of that is it's hard to get insurance or impossible to get insurance rather. But my investment is so minuscule that it doesn't concern me as much. This is my second tiny home. So I was really set on having a tree house. My tiny home back in Idaho is on the ground. I really wanted something unique and in the jungle. Even though everybody tried to convince me to put it on the ground, I got what I wanted and had it up in the air. A lot of times out here, people just bulldoze the whole lot and like plant grass. And I really wanted to keep as many trees as possible. Put red cinder around to kind of keep you out of the mud. And initially I wanted just like four posts, but we couldn't find them big enough and didn't know how we would carry them back here. So we had to create these corners and this shooting is for hurricane proofing for the winds. This ended up kind of feeling like a room when I had to do the corners like I did. And so I weighed like a lot of different options of what I could put down here and I surveyed my friends and everybody said the hanging bed was the coolest. So then I had to figure out how to make it. It hangs from this main beam here with a chain and then these ropes go through it. And it's actually repurposed from a old trampoline. It's actually a trampoline and it's actually upside down because this metal part is where the legs would initially stick out and be on the ground. So I turned it around and fed the rope through it. And this is the same rope I used for the railing upstairs. And then I just have some memory foam and um, I sewed this cover. And I have like little ties here that just go around to keep it in place and it's out of uh, indoor, outdoor fabric. And then I put this mosquito netting on it. I think it's pretty and it keeps the bugs out. And then um, on the ground here, I've planted moss. I wanted the moss here. The woods around here are actually covered in it. It'll take a long time for its roots to actually attach to the dirt. You can see that there's some plumbing here. This is the septic pipe. And then this is the septic tank. I will eventually cover it with something. The metal is kind of an access point if I ever need to be able to get into it. And the shower pipe, and I spray painted them so they can blend in a little bit better. And this is the plumbing. I have a propane water heater, and it just hooks up to the mini propane tank there. It lasts a long time. I have a little water filter, and then a 12 volt pump that is able to pump it all the way up there. Propane is battery operated and the pump is hardwired in. And the water actually comes from the roof. It's rainwater catchment. And so it comes down from the downspouts into two tanks here that I kind of covered up. Two of these white tanks, they're 275 gallons each. It's been plenty of water to do what this little house needs. So.
I'm on the big island of Hawaii and it's like I'm in a prime location to be off grid because there's plenty of rainwater. <laughs> Typically the weather will say here that it's 30% chance of rain, which means it like rains 30% of the day. Almost all year round, that's what you're gonna get. So it's really standard that everybody on this side of the island collects their water from the roof. And then also it's really sunny. So it gets plenty of sun. I have 300 watt panels and I only have a few lights, which are all LED bulbs and then power for your phone to charge your laptop, things like that. So I don't have a lot of needs power wise and that definitely does it. So my friends, initially my girlfriends were very suspicious. I remember when I was just planning the original tiny house and I was talking to a girlfriend on the phone as I was walking in through Home Depot and I'm telling her what I was planning on doing and she said, how are you ever going to find a suitor? <laughs> Which is like the furthest thing from my mind. Oh, sure. The table's a good fit though, as far as... Size-wise? Yeah, size-wise. Yeah, I like it. And it's they've all been really supportive now that they've seen it and it's I think a different thing than when I say I have a tree house in Hawaii. Tiny houses have like some, you kind of have to be kind of like, you have to be kind of like a little bit of a renegade or rule breaker to do a tiny house. Is it something anybody could do? I would normally say yes, absolutely. I would say yes, but if you're somebody who is like, has a lot of anxiety or needs to follow rules a lot, it's probably not the best option because they're in this weird loophole and they aren't entirely legal. It doesn't mean somebody's gonna take it away from you and that you're gonna go to jail, but it does take a certain type of person. There's not a lot of room inside, so I have these chairs and a little table. I would definitely recommend building your own house. I think it's one of the most empowering things you can do to actually be able to... It's like the ultimate providing for oneself. If you can build your own house, you'll always be okay, is what it feels like to me.